All right, so if we talked uh, about these things in general, it's time to get a little bit more specific, and what we will do now is uh, we'll work with Facebook. So go ahead and go to your web browser. Let's go to facebook.com. Facebook works very similar to the other networks like Google+, Plus, where you can have a sort of a parent account, a top account, and then children accounts. So with one login, you are then able to manage multiple business accounts. You've got the personal profile, and then you've got the business pages. So again, that terminology that we've talked about before, personal profile business page. So main login as a person. Uh, and then these are accounts linked to the main login. Just like Google Plus, Facebook has this. Other networks also have it. And so, quick reminder everyone, if you haven't muted your devices, please take a moment to mute your devices. So we're going to log in with some main login and then have the ability to uh, manage and create multiple uh, business pages. So most of us will just have the one login plus the one business page. If you wanted to, you can create two business pages for your, uh, from your personal profile if you want. Uh, most of us don't have that much use for that. It's going to be one business page for my business. And this login, people sometimes ask, do I need to use the business email address or personal? It doesn't matter, because just like in Google+, uh, whoever is that main login, that person, their content or identity doesn't show up in the business page unless you choose to, to approve that. But the default is that no, whoever is this account over here will not show up here. Because think about it in terms of like where I'm at, I log in with my personal uh, Facebook account, and then I manage the accounts of multiple clients. It would be disastrous if my stuff were to show up on their accounts, or any indication that me, the person, shows up on those businesses. So Facebook has it set up that way that me, the person, my stuff doesn't show up on these business pages unless I choose to do it explicitly. So here on uh, Facebook, you can go ahead and sign in. If you don't have an account, you have to go through the process of uh, creating an account. Um, I would say here, if you have an account, just use the one that you currently have, that's fine. And then we can create and delete uh, these these business accounts afterward. If again you're not comfortable doing this in the public lab, that's fine. You can do it at home, and uh, just take notes and rewatch the video and do it at home. If you don't remember your password, you could go through the part of retrieving it, but if you do that, it will reset your password, and then you'll have a new password. So. Full disclosure, as I've said before, I don't like Facebook. Personally, uh, for personal purposes, I don't like Facebook. I don't like its constant encroaching on privacy. I don't like that they change things all the time and change settings. I don't like the people behind it. And I don't like what's being revealed about how they affect global matters. So, for personal, I don't like it. For business, I love it. Because for business, it does what I need for a business, to reach the right audience, to reach a big audience. Lots of good positives as a business. As personal, I don't like it. And if you'll excuse me, I'll probably be griping as we use it, because gripe number one. Here's a pop-up reminding me, why not turn on your notifications so that I can even more notifications and pop-ups of what's happening on Facebook? For me, no. <laughs> For you, maybe. You might want to turn it on to get even more 
notifications about what's going on with, uh, with Facebook. And for personal, as soon as it loads up, then, okay, here's a great memory, blah, 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 here's your friends. Okay, this is the personal aspect of it. We're not going to deal with this aspect. We're going to deal with the business aspect of it. So, on the top right corner, there's a little triangle. It probably has an official name, but there's a little <laughs> triangle on the top corner here. You click on that. In my example, because I've already got this set up, it says, here are your business pages. Here are the various clients we work with and all of the clients we work with. You probably don't have that because you don't have uh, maybe a business page set up yet. So in my case, I switch to the business and I run the business. Well, in order for you to set this up, it's pretty easy. At that little tr uh, triangle on the top right corner, if you click on that, we've got uh, manage and create pages. Once I have more than one business page set up, I can go manage them, which is the same as see more. You can have as many as you want. I think I have connections to like 10 different pages here, different clients, and you'll probably just have one. And like Google+, Plus, you're going to need to remember to switch between the personal and the business. Because as soon as you log into Facebook, you get the message about here, okay, let's post something. I'm going to post a coupon about the business. Whoops, that's going to my personal account. So just like, Face, uh, just like Google+, Plus, I have to remember to switch to the right business. So step one, if you don't have one of these pages, we're going to create one. And like Google+, Plus, we can create it and it can be fake and then we can delete it later just to learn this. How many of you currently have at least one business page that you have access to? Just a couple of people. Okay, so for most of us this will be brand new. Click on the triangle and then click on create page. Yes? Maybe this is only, but once again, uh, for example, if I have a Facebook account, it's related to what I do directly. Mm -hmm. Do you suggest to create a page, a business page? That will be best answered depending on how you created the original account. Like I'm showing here, I created an account on Facebook that is me, Victor. But a lot of people on accident create an account on Facebook where they set it up as a business. When you're, when you're here on the home page and it says create an account, a lot of people create the business right here. Like, you know, amazing pets. You know, they're trying to create a new account here. This is the wrong way to do it. And technically, somewhere in the terms of service, it says don't do this. So sometimes people accidentally create the wrong type of account. The right way to do it is to log in as a person and then create a business page this way. And it can be converted if a person did it wrong because the other way is to create a personal account right here. And this way is to create the business. So you'll just have to, uh, to get your full answer. Um, short answer yes do it this way create the page if you did it this way we'll, we'll we'll have a way to convert it from this wrong way to the right way so I need to have a personal first Facebook yeah. account yeah. and I need to open the Apple page exactly someone in the Apple marketing team created it through a personal account and then created the page and then added more managers so we'll, we'll cover that too. More people to manage the one business page, but some person had to create it, and then the business page is created, and then we get multiple managers. Yes? Yes, somewhere, we'll, I have to look in the help screen or something, somewhere there is a, a way to uh, convert this from the personal account uh, to the business account, somewhere in the settings. Uh, so we'll, we'll be able to check it uh, during the break. So what I'm going to do is click on that uh, triangle and then create page. This is one of the reasons why we want to do it this way because targeting. A personal account is assumed to be used for people to people. Uh, me connecting to my friends or acquaintances or colleagues. A business account is assumed to be something about this a product, a cause, a book, you know, some sort of business sort of thing. You don't have this on a personal account. So you have to actually set up a baseline personal account 
this information included in it and then leave it there and then go back and create this is a Yes, basically. Uh, the thing is, it, you can put the minimal amount of information of personal. You don't have to put your high school and you don't have to put your favorite books and movies and all of that. Just you need a basic baseline personal account. Fill it in the most minimal level that they ask for. And then from there, create as many business pages as you need. Yes? So if you work for a corporation, how do they approach that? Well, that was the question about Apple earlier. So. The corporation would be some person in the corporation through their personal account creates the corporation's account. Then they give access to the rest of the team, as I'll show you how, they give access to the rest of the team to manage the, the business page. Can they still have like a completely separate personal account? With Any their first and last name or is that a con conflict? Any of these accounts that you create on Facebook is tied to one email address. Mm -hmm. So if I use victor at, at cox.com, that, that one can only be used one time on Facebook. If I then create a Hotmail account, yeah, I create a brand new free Hotmail account, and then I create another Facebook personal, and then on that one I create the other business pages. So one email tied to one account on Facebook. So uh, the first option here is what kind of business? You probably, I don't recommend to do the local business at the moment, even if you do have a real local business. Because like Google+, Plus, this will ask you for a lot of information about your business, like the phone number, so they can call you right now and confirm that you are a real business and that you are the business in question. So for most of us right now, even as a learning process, I would recommend we do the second one here, company. This one is not tied to anything special like an address and such. And again, if you really do have a business and you really want to do this for real, I still don't recommend to do it just yet because you're going to learn this stuff. It's going to be public. Everyone's going to see it possibly. It's not going to be ready. I would do, I would do the local business at home or at the business so that when you get called automatically by Facebook, you can confirm, yeah, this is my business. I would do the company or organization. And you have all of these other ones that are more uh, esoteric. You can even create uh, a Facebook page dedicated to your book. Let's say I'm an author and I want to create uh, a Facebook page about my current book. I can create a Facebook page for me as the author in general. And then each book that I release every few years will have its own Facebook page. That's even more work, more effort. Sure, but you can do that. And you have just about any kind of thing you can want to create here. Several years ago, I, I heard of a page where uh, someone created this account uh, that it was called something like, my wife promised me we could name our firstborn child Megatron if I get one million likes. <laughs> they did get one million likes. So now there's John Megatron Smith out there. <laughs> So just about anything can be created as uh, as a Facebook account, as long as you don't as long as you don't break the rules of the official uh, Facebook, you know, about like hate speech and uh, harassment and that sort of thing. And you know, this is the thing about the Wild West that all of these companies they, they have to figure this out uh, about uh, the limits of free speech and the uh, the <clears throat> what's the word the um, responsibility that these companies have that they're so big and far-reaching and powerful. For us, I would recommend then the company. There's various categories, lots to choose from. This, All of this stuff that we'll look at can be changed later if you set the wrong one. Um, but I'm going to do the fictional business, Victor's Bakery, and the best one that fits for that is Food. Where's food? I think they changed this recently. Um, I'm looking for something about food or restaurants or something. There's also the generic one could be retail, retail company. I think there was also a very generic one. Yeah, this was changed. 
recently. This is a this is okay. This is my second gripe of the day. They change all the time. Mm -hmm. So um, the purpose of this is they're trying to hone in on the perfect site for people. But those of us that used it a while, it's different, and we get annoyed. Yes. Is this affecting our targets, or we are choosing targets later on? This is part of that. It will affect our targets, but then later on we can choose the target a little better. I can choose education, but I can target technology. You could. You could, yes. So, um, I'll just use retail. I don't really think that's the best one, but that's fine. Victor's Bakery. This is similar to uh, Twitter and most of the other networks, where you have a uh, username and a full name. Okay, the full name was the one that is not unique. Remember we talked about on Twitter. I can create a Twitter account right now and call it John Smith, uh, and there's other 50 John Smiths that have an account. Well then, the uh, username at John Smith, that's the one that's unique that no one else can have. This one is the full name, so I can create this Victor's Bakery, and even if there's already a Victor's Bakery, it will let me. On the next screens is where we can choose the username, which is unique. Get started. Sometimes some people get a few more questions before they get to this point. How many of you got to a screen that looks like mine? Like this. How many of you got a screen where it's asking you a few more questions? Okay, so they, they, this is a thing, they changed this. When I taught this last semester a few months ago, uh, it was a little different. It had, a, it had a few more questions being asked, like target demographic and a couple of other things. So Facebook is changing their process. What we get from here, this is our home page of our Facebook account, ready to go. At the very top, I get an address, facebook.com slash victorsbakery dash gibberish. This is what I said last week about Google+. Facebook gives you some address that you probably don't want with a bunch of gibberish there. We will be able to change that, um, probably not for this testing account, but eventually if you want to do this for your real business, and even if you've had this for years, that name right there doesn't look professional. It looks like you just created the account and you don't know what you're doing. What I want is simply to have it say facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery. Those dashes, you know, I, I, those dashes are part of the address. If I'm trying to tell someone visit my site, yeah, facebook.com slash Victor's dash bakery dash one two five eight seven nine. That doesn't make sense. And the long name is not going to fit uh, very easily also on a business card or a flyer. I want it simply Victor's Bakery or Facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery with no dashes and special characters. The way you change that is you should see a button on the left side under your logo that says create page username. So username was the terminology that, that Twitter had. And it works the same way that this is a unique address that only one person or company in the world can have. Sometimes some people don't see this. Sometimes Facebook puts some limitations, and I know it's going to happen. It always happens every semester. I'm talking about something and someone doesn't see the same thing for various reasons. It might be because my account is older, my account has been verified as a marketer, my account has something that is different from yours and your account doesn't have it. It may be that your account doesn't have it, it might be on a different screen, or your account doesn't have it. The end. You don't have it, because it's my account is different. If your account is very different than mine, let me know, but maybe yours is on a button on the left and mine is on the right. But in my case, I see right here, create page. If I click on that, I'm not going to change it at the moment. So that's the screen where I would set a username where I would have a nice short address up on the, the, the Facebook address bar. So instead of having Victor's Bakery dash 18620, etc., etc., I would I, here I would choose Victor's Bakery. 
Now, I would not set this up right now because this is a testing account, right? Like I said, this is just something to learn, and so I wouldn't do it right now. This is an account that I'm going to play with, that I'm going to delete later, that is just for learning. But this username will be your URL. And by the way, oops, it's taken. Victor's Bakery was already taken. Um, Victor's Bakery is probably taken by another business, you know, nine years ago. Facebook's been around more than 10 years. So if you're just getting the great idea right now to put your business on Facebook, the name was probably taken. Not Victor's Bakery. I'm Victor's Bakery. People are going to choose different names, please. If you choose Victor's Bakery US, that kind of stuff, is it going to affect your business to have that name? Or it was important to get Victor's Bakery? No. Um, really, any no. name, any name, w any name could work based on more of the strategies we'll talk about. It's better to have the same name consistently on all the networks, however. Twitter.com slash Victor's Bakery, Facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery. If I have to settle for Facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery USA, I'll have to settle for it. But it's not going to be detrimental to me as long as I follow more of the strategies of getting the followers. Okay. It's okay, yes. As long as we are active and use the accounts and, and build more of our followers, it's okay if the name is different. It's not, it's different. not really. So how would it appear um, from your URL? If you already have Victor's Bakery, at Victor's Bakery, how would it appear? Isn't that repetitive? If I were able to claim Victor's Bakery, and this doesn't allow spaces or symbols, it would it would be this, you know, it would be this short name up on the address bar. It would be that exactly. So it would be facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery. So at some point you, you want to do this, not right now for this fake account, uh, but, but later. And some of you don't have the ability to select this because I've seen it all over the place. There's no definitive answer. For some people, they are not able to use their u choose their username until they have at least 30 likes, until your account is sort of legitimized by having 30 people follow you. Now, if you have those friends and family that will help you out, that, that's how they can help you. You can invite your friends to, to like your page. I'll show you how in a moment. But some of you will not be able to set the username until you have between 20 and 30 likes. It, it depends. Some people can do it in 20, some people can do it right away, some people need to wait to have 30 likes before they have that ability. Can you change it very easily with a username say you don't like it first? You can, but I believe there's a limit to how many times or how often they're trying to prevent spammers from picking a hot name and stealing it from someone else. So there is some kind of limit to how many times or how often. Is it uh, advisable to have a very short one, or does it matter at all? Like, I'm thinking about like I'm recreating my business, like life-changing solutions. Would you prefer that to like solutions or the solutions? Or solution yeah. sounds like a good idea that someone took ten years ago. So, short names are better, but someone probably took it because but it's. If my name is in there, so the solutions. Okay, then um, probably it's available. So, yeah, shorter names are better because they're easier to say and explain and share. But shorter names are often more desirable, so someone else probably took it. But I would try to do the shorter names first. So we can say here on Facebook usernames, this will be your... Uh, your URL, your address, so you'll have something like facebook.com, my business, um, if someone else already took the name, you have to settle 
or something else. Yes. I you have to somehow log into that old account, shut that one down, and then that'll free it up for you to use it on this new account. Unfortunately, this is one of the big gripes about all of these social networks. Their customer service is terrible. To contact someone in person and really handle this is so difficult. There's two billion people using Facebook, and these companies are just overwhelmed with trying to answer complaints and, and legitimate questions. So honestly, if you can't get into your account anymore, there's no way to get back into it. And that name is caught up there and no one can ever use it, even if you yourself want to. You might possibly be able to go through their help system in your current new account that you can log into and try to provide as much documentation as possible that you are a legitimate person. Because uh, there's a lot of hackers out there trying to act like someone else to break into someone's account. It's known as social engineering. They're trying to act like they're a legitimate person. I'm locked out of my account. And then they let them into the account and then they hacked it and bad stuff. So really all of these companies really operate under the under the under the motto of uh, guilty until proven innocent. They're not going to believe anything about you unless you really can somehow completely prove it that you are the legitimate person. So I'm going to say you might have to lose that name and pick a different one. And with regard to the error I made this week, I could just delete that and start over with the same name? That's why I don't recommend, I said earlier, I don't recommend to set uh, the name right now yet if this is going to be a testing account. If you remember to delete this one before creating your real account, fine. That's why I said I'm not going to set it. I'm just showing people this is how you set it. When I get home, for example, the one that I did the error on opening up, I thought it to open it at the business first, and now I see it needs to be personal to yeah. your page. So can I do that, then go back in and do it over? Yeah. That is possible, yeah. Question? Uh, will there ever be like a white book or a used uh, URL? We're, we're hoping for that. We're hoping for, for the release of these old names that no one's using anymore. But I don't know. They, I've been hearing at least two years, that for two years, that they're going to do this. All of these networks, have I've been hearing it for like two years. They're going to release all these unused names. I keep waiting, and it hasn't happened. So they really should, but this is you know strike three so far for Facebook. Well, all of them have that strike. Um, they should release these old names that haven't been used in a year. Uh, you know, uh, I work at Southwestern College. They don't have at SWC. They have at SWC News. Because someone in Turkey that hasn't used SWC for four years is not using it. But these, com but these companies don't release these names that are unused. The re really, the only way you get that unused name is if you're a big celebrity. Then you've got the pull and the clout to ask the right people in the company to give you that name. I remember years ago, there was someone that had gotten the Twitter name Jim Carrey. Then when the Jim Carrey decided to get on Twitter, he was able to get his name. But, you know, Victor Campos, I can't get that name because there is a Victor Campos in Guatemala that hasn't used it in 10 years or whatever. Uh, so um, we have to oftentimes settle. Facebook's been around over a decade, so you have to settle. So if you have um, a cause or a business on a social Facebook, do you have to end that before you can uh, transfer it over to, is that what you're saying, you have to transfer it before you can transfer it to a business? If you have a cause or a business on social Facebook, and you want to Personal Facebook. Off, personal Facebook. Now you want to transfer it to... Yes. There is going to be somewhere down in the help somewhere to transfer the personal one. It's a it's a cause, but we saw that box that said choose a cause. Right. So yes, setting it up here, this is the only purpose here is to set it up as a person. So, so if it was I'm getting so many notifications on the cause on on social? On your and personal? Like 20, yeah, on, on personal. That's gonna be something when we look at in the settings. Okay. In the settings it, it's all about your notifications and updates, which is probably set to maximum, so that's where you get too much. But we'll look at the settings to uh, to wrangle that a little a little later. Since I wanted Victor's Bakery, I can't get it because 
um, someone else already took it. Capital letters and such uh, don't matter, but they're useful for readability. Because if I called it Victor's Bakery, you know, that's, that's equivalent to Victor's Bakery with capital letters. But which one's a little easier to read? That's right, with capital letters. With capital letters, it's easier to read. It looks like two words that I can read. This one is blurring together. Internally, it doesn't matter, and you can change this, but capital letters are often easier to read. I could do Victor's Bakery SD. You know, I wasn't able to get Victor's Bakery, but I'm in San Diego, so I'll put Victor's Bakery SD. Or is that Victor's Bakery South Dakota? Doesn't really matter, but we might have to settle for a name. I think it can go up to 50 characters of length. Um, Use A through Z numbers and periods. To so bakery.sd, I guess. Any name will. work as long as you also engage in the multiple tactics of s of, of social media I really wanted Victor's bakery someone else took it I did manage to claim Victor's bakery on YouTube and Twitter but I have to be Victor's bakery SD on Facebook that name will work but I have to get past whatever fame the other guy has that I want. If there is a Victor's Bakery in Tokyo, uh, I have to do the effort to get more famous as Victor's Bakery SD. I have to be active and, and post on Facebook every week or every, or every day. I have to build more followers. I have to be more active on Twitter and everywhere. I have to I have to surpass them to get over the speed bump of someone else having my name. So any name will work, but you still have to be active and build followers and all of that as we'll talk about. Let's look at um, before we kind of try to use the account. Let's look at various settings. Uh, Facebook, one of the things I would recommend right away early on is to check the settings of your Facebook account because there's many of these out here and there's several that I recommend for you to change the defaults. When you log into a fa to your Facebook page, you have a bunch of menus at the top, pages, messages, etc. We'll look at each of these in a moment. but there's also settings. So let's go to the settings of your page. Here's a here's strike four on Facebook. It's very easy to lose track of your page. If I click on my personal link, it goes back to my personal account. If I want to go back to my business page, you have to remember to click on the triangle at the top right and switch to the page. It used to be, a few years ago, that as soon as you selected your business page, everything you did was about your business page. Now it automatically defaults you to take you back to everything as personal. And I'm going to lose track and start to post, sale this Saturday, use coupon code XYZ. Whoops, I posted it on personal. So you have to remember, wherever you're at, and one, one way to remember that is that it's telling you, you know, at the top right corner here, here's the name of your personal. You have to remember to click on your business and then it'll tell you, yeah, leave this page. It'll tell you, okay, you're on your business page. Question. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't done that yet. I went off to a different idea. I'm just saying that we want to go to the settings of the page, and we have to be careful that we are on the page. 
So unless the name of your page is listed up on top here, you're not on your page. If it says anything else, you're not on your page. Okay, so when you're on your page, and we'll click on settings, there's lots of subscreens and lots of settings. I'm not going to go through all of these settings one by one. You, uh, your unofficial homework is to do it yourself. Look through these different screens. If it doesn't make sense, a lot of them have some button that might say like read more or learn more. And then there's also the general help at the top there. So even a very complete class where let's say, you know, we can spend four weeks just on Facebook, four weeks just on Twitter, four weeks just on YouTube. I'm doing a survey, an overview of seven, seven different networks in three months in order for you to figure out this is the one I like, this is the one I understand, this is the one where I'm finding an audience. So I can't go into detail for every network. And on every network there's some sort of help system, and there's also Social Media Examiner, Sprout Social, Google Search, there's always a way to get yourself more educated. Here under settings, your first option is if you want to hide your page, if you want to unpublish it, it's not ready to be visible by the public. I, I have an ability here, if you edit this, you can unpublish your page. You won't be found on Facebook anymore. That doesn't have many uses, but some people need that. And there it is as your first option under settings. It would be a good idea once you've kind of designed it here, but when you're not quite sure you want to publish it, you put it on there. Could be, and then after that, you don't really need it after that. But yeah, in the beginning, as you're setting yourself up, you might unpublish it, set it up, and then publish it. Okay, so Facebook and all the social networks, in my opinion, there are two ways to run social media, two schools of thought. Two schools of thought on running social media. According to instructor Victor. There is the monologue. There is the dialogue. Mono, root word, means what? One or single. In contrast, what do you think dia means, or die? Two. So, two. Log, L-O-G or L-G-U-E. What is root word log, or logos? Word. Words. Monolog. Dialogue, single word, two words, multiple words. So, um, talking at your customers or followers. Monologue, talking at your customers. Dialogue, talking with your followers, your customers. Both of these are, are strategies that are valid and viable in social media. The bigger companies usually do the monologue, while us smaller companies should do the dialogue, in my opinion. So what I mean by that, Coca-Cola can afford to tweet all day long and never answer anyone. They're a multi-billion dollar company. I, as a smaller company, would do best by tweeting all day long and replying to people and building that following and getting followers and doing customer service. The dialogue, the back and forth. As a small company, I see this, I, I see this all the time in small companies that they tweet stuff all day long or post on Facebook all day long and they get some results but not as much as if they were actually being active, as they were actually being social in social media. 
which is the talking back and answering and all of that. So, so tweeting is not the same as talking back? It's the same. Tweeting is just the term in Twitter about posting to Twitter. Um, and pinning is the term used in Pinterest to, to use Pinterest. So simply talking back or talking with or talking at is using the network to reply to people. So uh, this is not uh, being social, not responding, not answering, not following up. And the opposite dialogue is yes, responding, or answering following up. And both both are good strategies. But I would really recommend for most of us dialogue. You tweet something, you post on Facebook, someone asks a question, obviously try to answer it. Would a would a uh, would a company, you know, would the teller at the bank would you appreciate it if they didn't answer you when you ask them, what are your interest rates at the moment? And they don't answer. Uh, in the real world, obviously, you wouldn't like it if the business didn't reply to you, the business representative. In the digital world, it's the same sort of thing. It's all digital on a screen, but I don't like it if I, re if I ask a question to the company and they don't respond. Basic customer service. Think about it now opposite. You're the company or nonprofit organization, or the band, or whatever you're doing online. If someone's asking you, when are you playing in San Diego? Let's say I'm a band that's touring the US. When are you playing in San Diego? And you never respond. Well, maybe I lost a fan because I didn't, didn't answer. And people nowadays with social media, they have such a connection now with bands and brands and companies and celebrities and people on social media, for good and for bad, you can reach these companies very directly. A lot of these big companies use this a lot for, for trying to do customer service. You know, airlines, uh, they try to answer their customers on, on social media instead of a phone call, because the phone call doesn't work. I'm on hold for half an hour. Maybe I can tr try to get an answer about hey, why is my flight delayed on, on Twitter, on Facebook. So what I'm getting at, there's a setting. The default in Facebook is the dialogue. Any person can write on your business page, or can comment, or write, or answer, or question you, uh, can comment on your business page. Well, that's good. I want uh, my potential customers to ask me questions. I want current customers to follow up. That's good. No, that's also bad because I can say here any crazy person can comment on your business page. Any abusive person, any troll can comment on your page. There there is then the tendency for some companies then, well, people are coming to my Facebook page and, and trashing me. Can I stop that? Yes, there's an option right here to turn it off. But then you're doing a monologue. You're shutting down the discourse. There is an in-between middle ground right here. Visitor posts, the default is anyone can publish to the page. Anyone can add photos and videos on my company's page. Anyone can write what they want on my company page for good or for bad. So if you click edit, you can say disable posts. So then now no one can write any mean thing, off-topic thing, trolling thing on my site. Great. But you also shut down the people that really do want to write something legitimate and real. 
So there's one in the middle. If you leave it on allow and then turn on review posts by other people before they're published to the page. Now you can approve, you can moderate, you can let anyone write anything. And it will show you here, seven people commented on your page. You can then approve it or deny it. You can then mark it as, this is spam, this is abusive. And it won't show up on your page. And it won't lower the quality of your page, it won't be annoying, it won't be distracting. It's an extra, it's extra more work. I have to log into Facebook and then go to the screen and approve this one, deny this one, report that one. I think it's worth it because to just disable it all, you shut down the conversation, you shut down the social and social media. You're going to then be a monologue rather than a dialogue. And having it open completely with allow everyone, it's too open. It's too many troubles. Uh, it's more work, but I have this for all of our clients where someone is going to review it. And we can set more managers. So it's not just one person having to keep track of it all. It could be three or five or ten people in the company uh, being able to approve them. So my recommendation here, highly recommended, leave it on allow visitors to post, allow anyone to post, but turn on moderation. That's the one I would recommend. And I would also leave allow photo and video. That's the default, and I would allow that one. Uh, I would let people uh, also share a picture or a video. People are so multimedia and visual nowadays. I want to take a photo of your beautiful food and share it. Why turn that off? And if a person is going to post a terrible photo, you are still going to be able to review it. Yes? So when it's uh, switched over to... Uh Review before mm -hmm. it applies to photos as well. Yes. So question. When you, re you answered the question. Mm -hmm. so when yes. you review, I think I missed something. Then you can either allow it to be posted or not. Exactly. All right. Mm -hmm. So this is the one I would recommend. Uh, my recommendation. How do you cancel it though? Somebody put something on there. This is not retroactive. You have to, if you turn this on right now and there were seven negative comments, mm -hmm. there's a screen that we can see that you can remove those. But this does not go back to deal with the ones that had already been posted. And we will see we have a screen where we can remove the negative comments that had already existed. Recommendation, use social media as a dialogue, but moderate their posts. That is something you can do in Facebook, but not in Twitter and other networks. Twitter, for good and for bad, is very open. Anyone can write anything, and no one can shut me down, but I can't shut anyone else down, which in this age of incivility, we're seeing the dangers of complete uh, openness of speech. Facebook has gone, has decided that they have more moderation built into the system and allows you to approve. You can use this also to also only show the best comments. If three people posted and two of them said they loved your food, etc., and one person says, I didn't have a good experience, there was a cockroach in the muffin. Well, okay, I don't want anyone to see that. By turning on review post, they will not see it. Then people say, well, that's, that's abusing the system. You're only letting the best comments forward. Yes, because it's my business. I'm putting my best foot forward. It's my property. I do what I want. I'm not infringing on anyone's freedom of speech. People bandy that around so much, but they don't know what it really means. No, you know? What's that? Exactly. Exactly. That's what the whole point of, the, of that amendment is. The government can't uh, restrict your speech, but private organizations definitely can if you're on if you're on their property and all of that. Think about it like this in the real world. If you come to my front uh, front door and start yelling profanities at me, I'm going to tell you to get off my property and do it on the sidewalk where it's public property. So on my property, you can't you know uh, mess with me. 
but on the sidewalk you can, and that's where I'm calling the police. So uh, here on these social networks is the same sort of thing. Don't come to my Facebook page and trash me, and even if I want, because, of my, because I only want the best comments, I'm allowed to do that. Uh, I have the power in, in Facebook. It lets me do that. These other networks don't. You can't remove anyone else's tweet, even if they're completely slanderous and libelous. Um, here on Facebook, you have the control. So this is one of the positives that I will definitely say about Facebook. You can really control your message. Keep it on, on track. Keep the good stuff. On the other networks, it can get away from you so easily that people are posting this negative stuff and it just gets away from you. A person is not stopped from creating their own Facebook account called I Hate Victor's Bakery. That now they're on the sidewalk. I, they're in public. I can't do anything about that. But on my own page, I can stop them from being negative or being harassing and spammy and trolling and all of that. Is there a possibility to just the part of the post? Maybe you like one part but not the other part? Yeah, you or can also... You need the whole thing. Can you show maybe an example of how as we get to that point, yes, but at okay. the moment we're in the settings. So, uh, yeah, we have the ability to edit uh, those posts and keep the best part in a particular post and really, really focus it. However, you have to decide, I'm running my business. I'm running Twitter and Facebook and Pinterest and YouTube. Am I going to spend the time to micromanage every single post? I could, but we have to decide if we have that time and effort. At the very least, we have the ability to say no comments, yes comments, moderated comments. And the one I would recommend is the one here. Mm -hmm. Yes? As a strategy, maybe, because you're in the industry, industry. Uh, should, should you allow some criticize that's on your page? For example, I went to Victor, Victor Bakery, but uh, pizza was cold mm -hmm. or something like that. Should we allow this sometimes to gain the trust? It really depends on the company. Um, I, would, I would say they're both valuable and legitimate to only keep the good stuff or to let everything reasonable. So if someone does say, yeah, your pizza was cold today, one reason to keep it public is because then that's opportunity, an opportunity for me to reply in public to say, we're sorry your pizza was cold, we're going to do a better job, we got a brand new oven, etc. So that's like a deeper discussion that we'll get to a little bit later about how to deal with negativity. But very briefly to mention that, um, so... So do they have a section like some businesses um, uh, suggestions to improve service or anything like that? Not exactly, but you can kind of make that happen. Your suggestion box and such, you can make it happen rather automatically by allowing people to comment. So positive comments, guess what, are good. Negative comments, guess what, are good. Actually, good. Because a negative comment can be an opportunity to reply publicly on how we're improving the situation. Um, this is much more important in Yelp. We're not going to talk about Yelp in uh, this uh, sequence of classes. I think it's a little harder to, to teach in a class. But um, what I'm mentioning here could be applied over to Yelp. Yelp is, of course, the biggest review site, although everyone's trying to steal their thunder. You can review businesses on Facebook now. You can review businesses on Google now. There's a lot of review sites, but Yelp is still the biggest one. And maybe you've never used it and you don't trust it and all of that, but it's the biggest review site. People sometimes say, well, Yelp and all of that is fake. They just bought those reviews. Yes, possibly, but Yelp is a publicly traded corporation. So it does have the responsibility to shareholders and all of that. And they are much better than they used to be in the beginning about actually dealing with real and fake reviews. And the thing is that even if you still don't believe, well, there's fake reviews there, uh, the more reviews that there are on a business on Yelp or Facebook, the more real they are. If there are seven reviews of a business, I can assume all seven 
are the owner themselves and their family members. But when there are 70 reviews, can I scrounge up 70 people to give me a review? Maybe. What about if there are 150 reviews? When you get to those sorts of levels of you know triple digits reviews, it's much harder to have fake reviews. And even if you take it down to 50%, think about it, all half of all those reviews are going to be fake. Even if you think that way, 10 reviews. Out of 10 reviews, half are fake. Okay, only five are real. I think five is way too low to have a real opinion of the business. Let's say they've got 30 reviews. Half of that is 15. 15 is okay for a number of legitimate reviews. If this business has 700 reviews, you know, some businesses in downtown San Diego have 2,000 reviews. Half of that, 1,000. Are there really 1,000 fake reviews? Okay, half of that, 500. Are 500, are you going to believe 500 fake or real reviews? The more reviews there are, the more real they are. So, these negative comments, negative reviews, are still going to be good because it's your opportunity to, in public, reply and show how you're going to make amends, how you're going to fix the thing. This will show to the public how you will fix things. However, don't beg, don't bribe. Small businesses often have this big fear of getting bad reviews because they don't, they don't have 50 reviews. They've got six, and one negative review is going to hurt them a lot. So they have this fear in that when someone does something negative, writes something negative on Yelp or whatever review site, they say, we're so sorry for your bad experience. Here's a free dessert next time. We're very sorry. Here's 10% off your next meal in hopes that they will fix their review. People, unfortunately, make a living or whatever making fake reviews to a business they've never set foot in to get something free. So if I say, I went to your restaurant and there was, you know, glass in the cupcake, and I'm scared and I reply, sorry, here's a free dozen cupcakes next time. Great, I got, I got a dozen cupcakes and I never set foot in the, in the bakery the first time. So don't bribe people. Don't give anything away for free in trying to... Uh, fix this. So no free X, Y, and Z, no coupon. Don't give anything away for free. And don't beg, you know, publicly, if this is going to be public, you know, don't beg, don't, you know, ask for a better review. What The way you do handle it Acknowledge the problem and give concrete um, actions that you would implement. A few years ago on one of these, um, I think like last Christmas, 2015 maybe, um, there's this uh, there's this comic book shop uh, that I that I work with. Uh, he got a review. Uh, someone gave him one star on Google, saying, "I was at your shop, and I was shocked that the that the uh, you know the clerk was speaking with someone else and talking and saying very racist things. I'm never coming back to your business." So that could have been fake. Someone could be very fakely saying, you know, you have racist employees. The business owner could have said, we're so sorry, uh, here's 10% off on your next purchase. And I told him, no, uh, you're going to, you know, acknowledge, okay, that was a problem. Our business, those opinions are not representative, representative of our business. That person has been fired. Uh, that person has been problematic. We've removed them. We're sorry. Uh, we're fixing the issue. You'll see that there, that's no more problem. So you're not giving them anything for free. You're dealing with it. You know, that, that was dealt the right way, I think. You don't need that kind of person bringing down your business. Let's say, uh, as the bakery, someone said, you know, uh, 
a restaurant. You're, I had a really bad experience. It was a birthday. The food came late. The waiter was very sarcastic. It was a terrible experience. I'm not coming back. If it was real, we're saying, you know, we're sorry. Uh, we're having trouble with that waiter. Uh, we're doing training. We're doing sensitivity training for all of our waiters, uh, for, our, for our personnel, and we're improving. Come check us out next time. You'll see how much better we are. Not giving anything away for free, no free dessert, no 10% off. It wasn't a fireable offense, because he's kind of funny sometimes. Uh, but we let them know we're fixing it, and we're doing it publicly, so that other people see they're trying to do something about it. They're not just paying lip service. They're not doing it uh, through private messaging, because oftentimes you can private message your, your customers. You're doing it publicly. So if you handle the negative comments properly, they can be good because ultimately you're showing you're a good business owner trying to fix the issue, and perhaps ultimately they do raise their, their ratings from a one star to a three star, four star, five star, whatever. And then if it was a bad review in that it was fake and they never set foot in the store, well, you didn't lose anything because you didn't give away that 10% free dessert. And these networks are getting a lot better in weeding out the fake... Uh, the fake uh, reviews. They notice that this account was created today and they put a negative comment today. That's a warning sign that a fake account perhaps created an account just to be disruptive. They put more precedence for those that have created their account and have had it for years and, and are actively reviewing in, an, in a good amount of time. When someone is active on Yelp for five years and they, they make one review every month or every quarter, then you worry that their one-star review is going to hurt you. But an account that was created this week that trashed you is less to worry about because it'll just probably be filtered out anyway or removed because the networks are smarter about taking out those bad fake reviews. So all of that ties back over here into the, your posts. I would say keep it like this to review them. And there's going to be a screen elsewhere over on messages where it will keep you up to date with who has done what, who has written what. A lot of these other a lot of these other options that are built in, um, the defaults are fine. Let me mention a couple of other ones. Merge pages. Sometimes some people need these. Um, need this one. That they created a Facebook page or someone created a Facebook page for them and now you're going to create it for real. I want to kind of transfer the information from that other account into this one. I can go through the process of merge. Uh, you need to have access to the other account to merge it into this account, and you have to prove it and such, but here you can merge different accounts together. Here's a spot to delete this. If you're just doing this as a learning pr process, here's a spot where you can come to delete it. You can download everything about what you've ever posted for your own records if you want under download. Post in multiple languages. This one might be useful. Uh, the ability to write posts in multiple languages is off, so the default is only the original language, probably English for most of us. If you would like to also have your posts reach different audiences in different languages, you can turn this on. It will not, however, automatically translate what you've posted in one language to another. It's not smart enough to do that, but it'll give you the option for you to write what your post is in one language and in another language. And so you can reach more people in more languages, but you have to turn that on. So when you click this, uh, when you're posting the, the post, mm -hmm. is it asking to, to the audience? Not exactly the audience, just the language. The audience is in another screen. 
but you will be able to set what language to the right audience when you're making the post. So each time, if you did one campaign, if you leave it on, you can just target the one language. You don't have to select multiple languages. No, but if you're running a marketing campaign, say Spanish and English, you would click that, but then future campaigns, you would have to unclick that. Well, like I'm saying, you can leave it as is and you don't have to choose the other language, but it might be easier, yeah, just turn that back off so that it's just only in the one language you want. You can turn it on and off as necessary, but I would say if you turn it on, just leave it on and just don't select the other languages. Yes? Yes. You you. It's more about you would like to write different versions of the same post, one in English, one in Somali, when you turn this on. If you have it off, it will only be in Somali or only be in English. But turning this on will let you select it and show it in different languages. Let's look at one more thing, then we'll take uh, one more break. Um, some of you might not see this. If you don't see it, this is again the example about maybe your account isn't verified, maybe you haven't used it long enough, maybe you don't have enough likes. But if you see preferred page audience, let's look at that on the left menu, preferred page audience. you don't have a preferred page audience set. When you select a preferred page audience, anyone can find your page, but we'll do our best to put it in front of the people who matter to you most. So right now, anyone on Facebook could see this. And even if we turn this on, anyone on Facebook could see this. But if we turn this on, here's where we can say, let's target people within this age range, within this gender, within this interest, within this language, within this location. This is what's getting Facebook and Twitter into trouble about the election, that people were able to, you know, agents from other nations were able to target exactly certain people in certain counties to see certain things, to sway them for the good and for the bad. All of the networks have this. For us, for good, we have the ability to uh, reach the right audience. Now, uh, Victor's Bakery, I probably want to target everyone of every age range. The youngest is 13. You have to be at least 13 to use Facebook. So if anyone, if you know anyone that's under 13 using Facebook, I'm going to tell on you because you're not supposed to be using Facebook if you're under 13. So anyone from 13 all the way up, uh, or let's say I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an annuity company. I'm a company selling annuities. Why would 13 or 18 year olds really care about that? I want to target people that are in, you know. Uh, middle age, retirement age, whatever. My business is targeting 50-year-olds and up. So I can do that. Everyone on Facebook will be able to see this, but it's going to be shown more to people that I choose. Before changing that, at the bottom, notice that estimate. If I say everyone, I can reach all 2 billion, 200 million people. That doesn't mean 2 billion people will see my my site. It means two billion people could see it. As I start to fine-tune this, let's say only 50 and up, it's gone down to only 270 million. That's almost the population of the whole US. Okay, and then let's say I'm also going to include up here location. People who live in this location, everyone in this location, so it's very targeted. This is very good. In the real world, marketing and targeting is very difficult. I said previously, I'm going to put an ad on TV. I'm going to put an ad about insurance on TV. Will I get better results by putting that ad of insurance on MTV as opposed to the History Channel? Assuming the History Channel has an older demographic. 
So if I put it on the right channel, I reach the right audience on TV. Here, if I target the right people at a location, for example, I can reach the right audience. People who live in this location. Facebook knows so much information about us because we so willingly give away so much of our information. When we post a message and say what we're reading and what movie we're watching and chatting and all of that, Facebook's storing and tracking all of that. And, you know, that's the, neg that's the most negative way to say that, that all these networks spy on us. But that's accurate. All of these networks are building profiles on all of us because we willingly use it. No one is twisting your arm to be on Twitter or on Facebook. But my mom's on Facebook, and my cousin's on Facebook, and my friends are on Twitter, so I'm on Twitter. But we're giving away all of our information, and real-world advertisers would love this. But online advertisers, us, we love this. We have so much we can tap into. Yes? Thank you, Dr. Tulane, for that note. <laughs> yes. um, uh, when you post something, do we have the, the, do we have option to target different audience? For example, if I have two products, if yes. I want to target like 13 years old and 15 years old yeah. in the United States, mm -hmm. and the 50, 65 in United States, and also 13, 15 in New Zealand, for example. Yes. This How can I manage this? This one will apply to your whole account in general. But after our next break, we're going to look at targeting individual posts. We have the ability for individual posts to be targeted to individual targets. This one will apply to everything at once. And if you don't do individual posts, individual targeting, this will apply for everything. So here, let's say, uh, this is pretty smart, people recently in this location and people traveling. So when you visit, you know, another city or you're on vacation and you, and you do something on Facebook, it knows that you live in San Diego, but you're currently in Paris. So then here, I can use that to say, well, people visiting San Diego, Victor's Bakery, I'm going to target those people. I'm going to target people, you know, that are from out of town, that are at least, you know, 200 kilometers or 125 miles away. It knows this. And it's going to show my stuff, my posts, my ads, my stuff to those people. So let's say I'm in San Diego, but I want to target people in Seattle. People who live in this location. As I start to type Seattle, Seattle, Washington. So a 25-mile radius, reaching a few people in Canada. Um, there is a limit to the radius, all the way up to 50 miles. Actually, that's not Canada. This is the other side of Washington. But uh, oh no, two people in Canada. But uh, here I'm, you know, targeting people down in Tacoma, and I can include multiple targets here. What I would say about this, this is again for the general idea. After the break, I'll show you specifically targeting each individual post, which is probably more effective. People always ask, well, I'm, I'm trying to sell my product all over the U.S. Okay, great. Choose the U.S. I'm targeting U.S., Canada, Mexico. Well, yeah, choose all three. The problem with there is you're casting too wide of a net. This is the problem about when a company can't find a demographic. If my company gets hired to do social media for a business, we have to do an interview where we try to figure out their product and who best it's targeted for. And we ask them, who's your target audience? And so many answer, well, everyone. Everyone wants my product. That's the wrong answer. Because no, not everyone wants your product. We had this example a few years ago. Uh, th this man you know, responded with that, and his product was baby strollers. So no, not everyone wants that product or needs that product. Eventually, we figured out his audience is first-time parents, first-time Latino parents. Now you've got a target audience you can, you can reach. When you say, everyone's going to want my baby stroller, no, you're not going to reach them. So when I'm saying everyone in the U.S. and everyone in Mexico, mm, yeah, you're going to reach 400 million people, otherwise known as no one, <laughs> because you're not targeting. Maybe think about you know, San Diego, USA, New York, USA, um, San Diego, USA, not San Diego, Venezuela, San Diego, USA, not San Diego, Texas, San Diego, California. 
So you can be too wide and you can be too specific. I'm saying San Diego with only a 10 mile radius, 50 and up, men and women, only 421,000. Only. That's not bad. I would love to have 421,000 potential customers. But there is a point where it's going to be too small, and you have to decide what too small it is. I think this is a very fine estimate. The population of San Diego in total is 3 million or so. So yeah, 421 is really small compared to 3 million. But as I get more narrow, I have the more possibility of finding the right audience. Yes. San Diego don't pick that one. I don't know what it is. It it's, must be some other sort of version of San Diego. Demilitarized zone or something? DMZ? Yes. I have a question. In my business, I could perfectly type anyone who speaks English because I do Skype, the phone, and my services in the country. So why, I'm a little confused. I don't know how I would target that. You said family. Family coach. I do service. I can get services over the phone, Skype, I do in person. So, so then, large audience. so then, you may put a larger audience of U.S. or California, and lower down here we have the option of interests. This is the one then to target that particular industry. So you can start with a wide net up here. All of California, all of the U.S. Yeah, all of English. You can, all over the world. Yeah, but again, I wouldn't think in those terms. I would still think about some manageable amount of, of audience. So let's say I put United, United States. Uh, you know, that's only 65 million. I would love to have 65 million potential customers. But then here is when you're going to narrow it down a bit more in interests. We also have the opposite doing with languages. Okay, let's say yeah, you, you'll deal with anyone in English, but perhaps you'll find a niche audience if we if we target Spanish speakers. So more ways to target. So let's say we, you're welcome. Let's say we do this larger area here. Then another important part is interests. Uh, simply by clicking the box, which is browse. Here are various topics. Again, people all day long as they write about what they had for lunch, as they like a page about a book. All of that stuff that they do, Facebook is gathering and has these uh, audiences. So if I'm Victor's Bakery, I'm trying to reach uh, people in California. 50-year-olds and up, so that's 7 million interests if I go if I select the uh, the food category in general I have subcategories in the triangle or I can add the category with the plus I've added food and drink 50 year olds end up in California went down to four million seven million down to four million I can then start to target even more. Okay, people that are interested in food and drink as well as pasta, gin, veganism, liqueurs, let's say coffee. I'll add coffee. Uh, it might tell you if you go into one category it might be more specific, it'll narrow your audience. That's not good or bad, you just have to see what results you get. I'll say okay. So, coffee aficionados in California, 50 year olds and up, one million audience. I think that that's going to work. I can further go in. Um, let's say people that like Food Network, the TV, you know, Food Network star, the TV show. I can target it that far. People that are interested in a particular book, in a particular movie, in a particular thing, not just in general concept. This is again the power of Facebook. And Twitter has this too. We didn't cover it in Twitter, but Twitter has this too. Uh, in that analytics.twitter.com screen, we have the ability to target our tweets to individual groups. So people in this demographic, one million. So 
So regarding creating demographics or segments. Yes. So when you set this up, is, um, is this kind of tied together with the free speech code? Somewhat, yes. This one is the free version, and boosting posts is a not free version, which is actually what we'll cover right after the break. Is the free version like somebody's looking for pictures? Um, no, someone's looking for Food Network Star or Coffee. It may show up Victor's Bakery. Oh, the little list that shows like this or this or this. Or yeah. yeah. So too wide or too narrow. I cannot tell you what's too wide or too narrow. Two million might be too narrow. Two million might be too wide. One hundred ten thousand might be too wide or too narrow. I can't tell you that. Uh, this is one of the examples where again I can talk about it in general in a class, but then for specifics we can talk in the breaks. And then when a client hires us, we have to figure this out. We talk to them because they're putting us in charge of getting success on social media, which should then be success at their cash register. So we have to figure out what's their product, who's their target audience, get away from that, from the answer of everyone, get into the narrow aspects. Because uh, there is an audience that wants to drink Coca-Cola, there is an audience that wants to drink Powerade, and there's an audience that wants to drink Dasani. All three of those come from the same parent company, the Coca-Cola company. But they have a product for those that want to drink water, those that want a sports drink, and those that want sugar water. So they have created a segment. That's the fancy word in the, in, in the industry, segments, segmentation. They've created a segment, a demographic, to create tweets for those that want Dasani, to create tweets for those that want Powerade, and to create tweets for those that want Coca-Cola. They have created a segment on Snapchat to reach Dasani drinkers, Powerade drinkers, and uh, Coke drinkers. So what's too wide and what's too narrow is going to depend on your product, your audience, and all of this stuff. Perhaps start wide. Then, as you gain data, which they call it here insights, also known as analytics, stats, as you gain data, then narrow down to the right audience. So it's okay to start with the whole 18 to 65, and okay to start with the whole US, and maybe one interest. And then as you run, a, as you run your Twitter for uh, your Facebook for a month, then you check your data, your analytics, and it says, well, you're getting a lot of results from people in Minnesota, which I never thought of. I'm getting people in Florida. So then I can start to think about uh, boosting a post to further target to that audience. Not, not quite going back to this screen and narrowing only to Minnesota. I would still leave this wide, but boosting a post, which we'll get to soon, which is to target our posts directly to a specific audience. This is modern social media uh, targeting, segmentation, finding the right audience. Yes? I'm still a little confused. Why would you target it? Doesn't it matter? Yeah, but what what is what is more? Everyone in the U.S.? For example. No, that's still too wide. You have a product that is only interesting to certain people. Yes, you're targeting uh, a lot of people, but your product, whatever it is, your your service, whatever it is, there's still some amount of people that are going to care most about it. So. If we start too wide, it is too wide. Um, it'll make more sense as you use it, and yes, target a bigger audience, but as you then get the data, and it tells you, Facebook will tell you, you're having more success with people in this particular city or with this particular interest. So then it would be most important for us to create Facebook posts about that audience. And then it's going to reach that audience. Those are the ones that are going to reply to you more, call you or hire you, and so forth. 
so whatever you set up here uh, will happen in general and then we'll do boosting posts. Uh, be careful one thing here about language. This one is kind of confusing. The little help bubble here. Leave this blank unless the audience you are targeting uses a language that is not common to the location you've chosen. People think here, okay, I'm going to target people in English and Spanish. Well, I selected San Diego, which is assumed English and Spanish. Um, perhaps uh, Japanese. That might not be a big uh, language in San Diego. Uh, maybe the opposite, I'm in Hawaii. Maybe there I don't have to assume Japanese, but I do then have to explicitly say Spanish. So based on your location, put something here if it's not a common language. Unfortunately, there's no way to, for it to tell you what is the common language of the area. Um, so it's okay to leave this one blank, but the other ones I would think about uh, narrowing. You can save that. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about the other way to target, the more effective way to target, uh, which is called boosting a post. And uh, we'll do that right after the break. So it's 12.17. We'll take a break until 12.27, and then we'll go on.